Hey everybody, it's Nathan from Savage Lands News. How are you guys doing? I hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, slowed down a little bit on content recently, but we're back. I've been experimenting with three decks recently, Reinar, obviously, Leviah, and Vincent, actually. I'm still going to make up my mind on who I'm going to play. It's probably one of the brutes at this point. I don't think I'm quite there yet with Vincent. You know, I just don't have the matchup experience. Um, but Levaya has been a lot of fun. And I have my own little twist on this list, right? I've been uh, practicing playing her a lot. She is super fun. She has a lot going on. A lot of things to micromanage. But yeah, she's super cool. And obviously she plays Blood Rush and, you know, that's what I'm pretty good at. So it's not really that big of a jump, to be honest, to switch between the two heroes. So if you're a Reinar player, I would recommend picking her up. Currently in my deck box is, you know, Reinar and Leviah at the top and the bottom. And I play whichever one I'm feeling like, right? They share a lot of cards, kind of. They have very similar play styles, I would say, with some like minor flips, right? But we'll get into that. So why would you bring Leviah over Reinar? Well, for one... She has six to eight more health, which is kind of huge, right? Carrion Husk is, is a piece of equipment, right? This thing is nuts. And then also you can run Grasp of the Darkness over Gambler's Gloves uh, and get yourself two more life. And it's life like it, it's it's blocking that is on damage. So it's unnegotiable pretty much. Like your opponent can't interact with Grasp. They like they just can't, um, which is crazy. So Katsus and Lexis don't get to do like the tricks. Um, so you get one get out of jail free card against those two decks. And then obviously this can save you six to eight to 10 life, sometime 12, you know, depending on what you block. So cards kind of cracked. So yeah, eight health more plus sometimes more than that, sometimes a little less, depending on if they get you to pop your care and husk a little in a way you didn't really like. But yeah, eight more health in a aggro format is a lot. It's a lot. If Reiner had eight more health, I don't know if I would lose that often. <laughs> so so that's one reason. Uh, reason number two is she has higher damage card cards and plays on average, kind of, right? You've got your three card 12 with like Dread Screamer into Graveling Growl, three card 13 sometimes. You've got your two card nines, which are pretty sick. Those are just like your bread and butter plays that are just doing more damage than Reinar can do unless Reinar rolls scabs. And you also, uh, also have better scab math, which is kind of crazy too, right? You can pitch a blue, you can come in with like a hungering slaughter beast for seven into a graveling growl for seven off scabs. That's a, that's a three card 14. Oof. We're talking good numbers now, right? Those are pretty sick. That's pretty good. Um, granted that's a scabs play, but Rhino rolls car scabs all the time. So if you're going to be rolling scabs, you might as well do more damage. Right. Um, and she also just gets Reinar's best cards. So she also gets to play swing big. She also gets to play savage feast. She also gets to play barraging beat them. Uh, also gets to play Reckless Swing, right? So she's got a lot of Reinar's cards. And then third, and maybe the most important, is her Blood Rush math is slightly better, right? Slithering Shadowpede from Arsenal means that you can three-card Blood Rush for 18, which is pretty sick. If you get a little lucky, but you can do it. Um, she also has technically the ability to go higher on her Blood Rush damage turns, right? Uh, kind of sometimes, right? Um Reinar can still go pretty freaking high with like red barraging and his standard setup or like uh, savage beatdown. So Reinar can match her blood rush numbers, but she has an easier time doing it, I would say, right? Reinar has to jump through some pretty thick hoops to get his blood rushes past 18 to 20, right? The, you're really looking at like 21 to 24 as his theoretical maximum. Leviah can go like to 30 when she has Blasma Fett. And the perfect card setup, right? So she can do some crazy blood rush numbers. Um, so yeah, higher blood rush numbers, most of the, on average, easier to get higher numbers. Uh, eat cheaper blood rush curves, which is super important. Anybody who plays brute a lot knows that like one frostbite can often mess up your entire blood rush math. And higher damage on her like average plays, like endless maw, dread screamer into grappling growl, right? Okay, so she has higher damage, more health, and better not and better blood rush math. What makes her worse than Reinar? Um, well, consistency is her probable biggest weakness. Granted, her demi hero card gives her a lot more consistency than she used to have. Right, we've all seen Leviathan players implode from draw randomly before. So she has a little bit of a get out of implosion jail free card here. Um, you know, granted, there's some hoops you have to jump through for it. Um, but yeah, consistency overall is one of her problems, right? 
Uh, I've been playing this deck a lot and I'll go to an armory. I'll go absolutely undefeated, crushing everybody into the next week going like two, two, three, three, you know, four, two, whatever. Right. Um, and it's because no matter how you look at it, she's got some inherent flaws, right? You can't play blood that cards early because you literally can't. And then because of that, you're kind of forced to run some of these like cards, right? Swing big, savage feast, uh, you know, shout out, shadow Pete helps quite a bit, but command and conquer pulping, right? You're, you're forced to run some of these cards. And if you just don't find any non blood deck cards, you're forced to block until you have a decent enough graveyard. And if your opponent like kind of recognizes this, they can go, they can, they can like really make it difficult for you. Um, another thing that I've noticed that is a consistency problem I'm having is some games. I literally only draw the non blood deck cards. Like I'll just get savage feast, swing bigs, blood rush, beast within and like barraging beatdowns and some of these non blood deck cards. And my opponent's an aggro hero like Lexi and I'm trying to race them. I'm trying to race them. I'm trying to race them. And I go to Blasma Fett flip and I look at my banner zone and there's nothing. There's nothing in there. I didn't find an endless maw or a dread screamer to block with. I wasn't able to get one in my banish zone. And now I'm being pressured at my flip range. And if I flip, I literally get nothing, right? That's kind of annoying. Um, and then there's some cards in here, obviously, uh, that don't block Deadwood, Shadow Peed, right? Pulping, uh, Mark of the Beast, if you draw it early, doesn't block, Reckless Swing, Doomsday. These cards also are just like inherently going to cause you some problems. Like if your opponent, if you just draw a fistful of non blocks and then your opponent just goes cripple crush, you're like, oh, hmm. Hmm. Guess I'm going to take 11 and discard two cards, <laughs> you know, like, oops. Or your opponent just finds that like one CNC on the worst turn possible. You only have two blood that cards that block the other two don't do anything. And you're like, oh, cool. This doomsday and this deadwood rumbler, uh, are gonna, are gonna cause me to lose my arsenal now. Right. Whatever. So some inherent, inherent consistency issues. So why would you pick Levi over Reinar? It's honestly, if you anticipate the meta being more aggressive, she has a much better win rate into Lexi, which is like by all accounts, uh, good. <laughs> like beating Lexi on a brute hero is pretty fun. Um, I do enjoy it. It's not like a free matchup, but it's definitely, you definitely can take it. It's actually pretty good. Like you have a lot of tools for it. Um, so she's better into aggro matchups, right? On average. And she has some, if you have the tech cards for it, she can do some like long recursion style gameplay and just grind your opponent down, which is awesome to do. But yeah, she's better into, into aggro. Um, I would say Reinar, I've been saying this for a while. Reinar is, after these last couple of events, the top eight is like Icelander, Bravo, and Dromai. I would much rather have Reinar in that meta than I would Leviah. And I know some people are going to be like, well, but whatever. I would much rather have Reinar in that meta than I would have Leviah. But to get to day two, and to get to top eight, I'd rather have Levia playing into the absolute whirlwind of Viscerai and Lexis that most of these events have looked like, right? So it's kind of like a pick your poison. Reinar closes games easier. His blood rushes do more true damage on average, unless you're going for like the Blasma Fett damage because he just intimidates intrinsically one card, which means your blood rushes come in for more than six. Like Levias will come in for six if they block 12. Um, and he's really good into slower decks like Bravo, but if I'm playing a whirlwind of aggro decks, I'd much rather have Levia. So you guys need to pick your poison and kind of go with it. Okay. So I did make some changes to the, 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 the good list, right? Uh, the one that Ethan and Pat and everybody have been kind of playing around with. And you'll notice that the main changes I made were reducing the blue count, I, which a lot of players... Levi players have told me is like Blasmophy, but Blas, <laughs> Bla <laughs> damn it, Blasmophet, right? Um, I found personally my biggest issue with the standard Levi lists was consistency, right? Obviously, she already has consistency issues, but aside from just those issues, her intrinsic ones, having consistency doing the one thing that I need to do, which is blood rush three times perfectly. I need to blood rush. I need to do 20 something damage on my blood rush every single time I see it, as soon as I see it, because I have three chances. And if I don't do this perfectly, Lexi's going to kill me in four turns, right? Um, so 21 blues, it's a lot of them, a lot of blues, especially when a lot of those aren't sixes, right? So a lot of blues that would gum up my blood rushes, Art of Wars, gum up my blood rushes, Yellow Dread Screamers, gumming up my blood rushes. Anything that didn't say six on it was really annoying me. 
And she has a really big issue where, like, if you draw a Art of War, a Blood Rush, and two blues, like, how do you even, how do you even get rid of them, right? How do you even fix that? Do you stick an Art of War in your arsenal and then hold the Blood Rush and then try and block with your blues or claw claw or something? Like, what do you do? Um, a dead turn like that just loses you the game into some of these aggro heroes. So I cut the blues all the way down. I cut out all the non sixes that I could. I added some nice blood rush finishers like, you know, hungering slaughter beast for seven on a, or nine on a blood rush is pretty sweet, uh, especially for like your first blood rush of the game. 19 damage, 20 damage blood rush is pretty hot. And then, uh, yeah. And, and I found it much better. I was actually down to 17 blues for a long time, but I went up to 18 just because I like barraging beat down, but let's go over the cards real quick. So boneyard, dread screamer, endless maw, gravel and growl, hungering slaughter beast, savage feast, slithering and swing big, right? Uh, pretty much her best reds. I don't think there's much room to argue about what her good reds are, right? Savage feast is maybe a little bit more on the greedy side, but it can do 18 damage by itself with scab skins. And to me having four or having nine blood rushes instead of just three is pretty nuts. So savage feast made it in swing. Big is just like eight damage. You know, shadow peed is kind of nuts. Good blood rush math. We talked about that earlier. Gravel and growl is sick, especially since I'm running things like hunger and slaughter beast, like scabs, hunger and slaughter beast, gravel and growl. That's three card 14. Endless Maw needs no interaction. One cost six and go again right? Her cards are cracked. Okay. Her reds are good. Um, as far as yellows go, I went with like the standard, you know, two cost six amazing for blood rush curves, graveling ground for those three card twelves, uh, beast within just makes blood rush and savage feast better. If you are not running savage feast, you could probably cut this card out. Probably. I mean, it only interacts with blood rush at that point. So it's kind of like a weird expensive six power card that can kill you late game. Um, but yeah, uh, pretty good. Mark of the beast. I love and hate this card so much. Um, sometimes this card is like the best thing to ever happen to you. Like you can go for like the savage feast, discard this, it banishes itself. You turned off blood that then you can do some massive thing with like gravel and growl finishers after claws, pretty sick. Other times you find two of them early and you have to block with them and you just accidentally made your blood debt higher than it needed to be. Uh, and then her blues, right? Barraging beatdown, good way to fill your graveyard early, especially against like Icelander who maybe isn't going to attack you. Convulsions closes the game. Same thing with Barraging Beatdown, just good ways to get that final bit of damage because she actually kind of does struggle with that. The more your opponent recognizes that blocking you out is a valid strategy, the harder your opponents get, in my opinion. Uh, blue sixes, so Deadwood Rumbler, Wreck Romp, Soul Harvest. I've actually played Soul Harvest to decent effect a couple times in the late, late game. Uh, Reckless Swing is my favorite card. I like two. You can go to one, you can go to zero, you can go to three. And then Doomsday is just kind of like doesn't really warrant it in the list i'm not sure i only fire doomsday like especially with the flipping and stuff like every six games or something like that every i don't know every 10 but once you fire it it feels like you win the game on the spot kind of all right sideboard um command and conquer good into lexi also really cool with art of war right coming for seven sometimes you can just get that cheeky double arsenal rip off command and conquer with uh, art of war pretty pretty cool um good into everybody pretty much Howl from Beyond and Ghostly Visit. If you are playing one of those super slow heroes, you can do that recursion loop, flip to Leviathan Redeemed. You can do this infinitely pretty much. It's uh, nice. You don't have blood that anymore. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's pretty much like a one card. What is that? Seven? That's nice, <laughs> right? Uh, pitch of blue, Howl, Ghostly, put it in your graveyard, play a, a Banish three, do it again, right? You can pretty much infinitely do this. Uh, it's pretty sick. And they're also way more flexible than playing both at the same time. Uh, Guardian of the Shadow Realm, mostly because I have really good Bravos and really good Dorys in my shop, who the good Dory in my shop will absolutely spank you if you don't have a Deviant. They know it. They know you have non-blocks. If they're not on the mid-range Dorys and they're on the much more aggressive Dorys, they're going to find a way to get counters. Guardians is just sick. It sits in your arsenal. It's a two cost six. It can shut off pretty much any one of Dory's turns, except for like Twinning Blade. And then if you get this in your banish zone and you flip to Blasma Fett, it is a one card block six. So you can flip, block with Husk, block with Guardians, four card Blood Rush, play cards from your graveyard, annihilate them or banish zone, right? Uh, pulping, good for Icelander, good for a lot of matchups you're trying to be aggressive in. Good for decks that don't let you fill your graveyard like Kano, like uh, Icelander. Ram Raider, this used to be one single yellow Dread Screamer, but... 
I've noticed with Blast Mephet flipping, I actually don't mind this card being a three card six because I'm playing it from my banner zone anyways, or I just found it magically with a shadow peed and everything worked out pretty. Um, but yeah, it just works. It also works like you get it in your banner zone, you flip the Blast Mephet, you might find the shadow peed in your hand. You can do something really cool with it. So I like it. I don't love it. It's a it's a bad card. Reinar doesn't even run it. But in the case of Blasmafet flipping, I found it nice and it says six on it. So, OK. And then Art of War cards, very difficult to rate. It's either the best card in the deck or the worst card in the deck. Right. We're drawing two cards every time you play this. You're drawing two cards every time you play Blood Rush. That means that we're drawing a lot of cards. It means we're going to find all three Blood Rushes. Most likely we're going to find all three Art of Wars. Most likely that's a lot of card draw. If you find this with a Shadow Pete, it's cracked. But sometimes it's clunky, especially with Blood Rush Bellows. It gets a little clunky, especially when you have like uh, three costs in your hand or something like that, right? This card isn't that fun to play in those circumstances. But man, when these these cards just align nicely, when Blood Rush and Art of War align nicely, you feel unstoppable. And then that all you got. I think there's going to be an absolute metric load of uh, ninjas. And this card is pretty sick because it just gives you a mask turnoff, right? And if you have like a one cost in your arsenal, you can just turn off mask, save yourself a little bit of life, draw it, and then play this card from arsenal. And you've just probably turned off like a bunch of damage, right? And I've gotten some like pretty greedy plays with it, right? You know, like I just go, I hope I draw a yellow here and I do. And then that saved me like 15 life and I still managed to do six or seven. It's pretty cool. You have to kind of understand the flow of the deck before you take those risks. But yeah, and then your sideboard. Right, Leviah Redeemed, Blasma Fett. We know how cracked this card is. Fendel Spring Tunic, just good for long grindy matchups. And Icelander, Grasp, Kane, uh, uh, Lexi, and Ninjas. And then your Null Rune. I like AB3. I think Icelander is super prevalent right now. I don't mind going kind of like a little bit slower, longer with more non Blood Debt cards into Leviah or into Icelander. I don't mind playing a little bit of more recursion uh, just to be able to empty my own graveyard. So uh, I think AB3 is pretty good. I don't really. You know, I haven't, I'm not struggling super bad in Icelander. I think Reinar is a little bit better into her, but, you know, this one cost cards actually make surviving through the Frostbites much easier than Reinar, who, whose entire deck pretty much turns into uh, three cost cards on Blood Rush, you, you know, after the first Frostbite, right? So pretty good. It's pretty good. All right. So let's talk about the overall premise. It's going to be matchup specific, but in your typical aggro matchup, you're looking to survive while presenting as much damage as possible and filling your graveyard in with good cards, right? Weirdly, blocking with Dread Screamer early and Endless Maw early is a good idea. Why is that? Because when you go for your 33 damage Blood Rush or 36 damage Blood Rush after you Blast Mephet flip, you need power cards that have Blood that in your Banish Zone. So you want to banish a Dread Screamer and an Endless Maw pretty fast. You want to. You want to get a Shadow Pete in there. So you actually kind of want to get some of these cards out early into your graveyard and then you want to banish them and then you want to flip before you hit 13 and you want to do a massive, massive blood debt, blood, blood rush bellows, right? Massive art of war, right? So you're blocking, you're staying alive. If you can help it, you're saving carry on husk for when you flip the blasma fet, right? You're going to flip the blasma fet, block with your carry on husk. Block with your scabskin leathers, maybe block with your scowling flesh bag if you can. You probably use that earlier. And then you're going to do your 30 damage blood rush and you're going to pull all the cards out of their hand. And then you're going to take absolute full control with your five to six card hands that you permanently have for the rest of the game. Right. That is the dream. Now, obviously, it doesn't always go according to plan, but you get there by playing two card nines, three card twelves, thirteens and fourteens and one card sixes. Right. Uh, or two card sixes, depending on what, what what you got going on with like tunic. So that's how you get there. Again, slower, grindier matchups. Uh, I think Bravo, the new like shield sword and shield Bravo. You're looking the blood rush above 18 damage three times, right? And this is Bravo will challenge you. Icelander will challenge you. Some of these heroes that'll defend really well will challenge you. Uh, one of the biggest weaknesses compared to Reinar is that your blood rushes aren't recursable, recurrable, right? You can't just go re remembrance them back in, right? Your blood rushes are pretty much gone. They're going to get banished. It's just how it's going to work. And if you're only doing 18 damage, that means your opponent with three blocks in their hand is going to take six, right? Reinar, you're going to do nine. doesn't seem like a lot, but it's a lot different, a lot different. Reinar, sometimes you're doing two intimidates. Sometimes you're doing an alpha rampage to close out against a Bravo off a of blood rush. So you're not doing as much free damage 
as you are on Reinar with your blood rushes. So you have to go over 18. How do you go over 18? Scab skins, roll before you blood rush, especially if they're slow, right? Dread Screamers, Dread Screamers is a great way. Artivore, sometimes. I don't love doing Artivore on blood rushes, but it does do the job sometimes. And Blasphemous Making the call on when to flip the Blasphemous versus Levia is very difficult to understand. My general rule of thumb recently is like, if I have Bravo around 10, I can, and I have a blood rush in my control, like in my arsenal, I'll flip the, I'll flip the Blasphemous even if I have like six to 10 blood dead, because I'm like, I'm gonna kill this Bravo next turn. I'm gonna have so much pressure. My graveyard or my banner zone is full of Dread Screamers and Endless Maws. I still have Gambler's Gloves up. I can roll, I can do some really filthy things. I'm gonna over, I'm gonna overpower this 10 life. Uh, but sometimes you're at like 14 cards in your banner zone. Your opponent's at 20. I don't recommend flipping unless like you're positive they can't block it, right? That's the game I'd be like, okay, maybe this is a, a redeemed or maybe I just don't flip. Right? Maybe I just play Reinar numbers, Brute numbers, Levia numbers. I just overwhelm them. Maybe I get a little greedier with Scabskins, right? So understanding when to not to flip and when to flip is pretty, pretty important to play this list. All right, so that's overall strategy, overall card choices, why I made them. And, you know, the main difference is honestly just the blue quantity and the yellow choices, right? And then some of the reds are slightly different, but pretty much we all know what the best Levi cards are. There aren't very many to choose from. Let's jump into some games real quick. Okay, first match of the day. Let's do it. Ice Liner, one of the harder matchups to do. So I'm gonna go AB3. We're gonna we're gonna go for cards that will get me uh more chances of putting uh of discarding. We're gonna submit that. And Levi problem number one. We are now stuck with nothing to play on turn one, which is rough. And I want to block with this Dread Screamer. Our opponent is probably not even going to attack us once. So the likelihood of that is zero. So I guess what we're going to do is we're going to hope they attack us. And I'm going to put one of these Dread Screamers in our arsenal. It is unlikely. I kind of wanted to keep that yellow just to not take arcane damage here. But we're going to just hope and pray that they attack us so I can block with this Dread Screamer. They won't, though. They're smarter than that. They know. They know not to. Oh, Bolander. Good sign, number one. Sick. Sick, they're gonna hit us with that. They're gonna hit us with that. Oh, okay, interesting. Getting rid of the sink early. That's a strange one. I guess they know we don't have anything at graveyard, so it's not that big of a risk to them. Um, I don't love putting a blood dead card in my arsenal this early, but see, and here's the problem, right? Levi problem number un. We have nothing in our graveyard. We drew a blood rush on turn two, right? And now you know that we're gonna get two cards, so they have to attack us. Otherwise, we can't blood rush. And even if they, even if we do, we don't have tunic, right? So we don't have, and we have a two cost in our arsenal that's gonna banish all three of the cards, and we're not gonna get any intrinsic value out of Dread Screamer at all. It's just gonna come in for eighteen. See, mm -hmm. not great. And they're not attacking us. They know better. They know better. So we're not gonna get anything here. I think I'm just gonna put the pressure up. We might just claw for ten here. I'm gonna get the engine going probably what I'm going to do. I don't love it. Like I don't love pretty much saying my blood rush is going to do 10, but I feel like Icelander doesn't give us very many opportunities to ever do damage. I don't have any zero costs, but we're going to get a frostbite. We don't have Fendal spring tunic. So we're honestly looking the claw claw here. Oh, we got a wreck around. Okay. And we have this still short of greatness claw. At least we're going to get eight instead of just claw claw. At least we're going to get eight and we can either way we get the either way. We're going to get our graveyard fill. Um, what do I like more blocking three? Probably. I think I like blocking three more. This could banish something that we discard something. We really don't want to be discarded though. And we could always use this for a B. Hmm, this is kind of a weird one. I think we kind of, I think we kind of want to discard that dread screamer. Yeah. I think we want to discard the Dread Screamer over a random card because we might draw like a Pulving or something that'll let us fire. So, you know, if we had Tunic, if we had waited one turn cycle, we could have clawed and done eight there, which would have been hot. But granted, getting those two cards in combination double blue off, that is rare. So we couldn't have counted on that anyways. But now we have we have four cards in our graveyard. We're going to leak a tiny bit of damage here. Um, granted, not what we want to see. I think we, we actually leaked a lot of damage. Weird. I wonder... I mean, we knew one of these is a wounded bull. 
So they're going to probably two card eight in pocket an ice card. Oh, they're going to pitch. I'll take three. That's fine. There's still 10 ahead. So now, now we can look at doing more fun things like a three card with tunic. Three card 12, fill it back up. We'll go down to three. Okay. Coronet peeking us, huh? Uh, no, I'd, I'd rather discard here, to be honest. I'd much rather discard here. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> I love discarding. Okay. So we're going to come in for six, and now we can get a, uh, back up to four. So we basically, we traded our graveyard exactly neutral here. Now, depending on what card it is, we can react with Tunic. We can keep... Um, we can keep Gravel and Growl or Shadow Peed and stick one in our arsenal, stay neutral, probably going to pick Shadow Peed, and then uh, continue with our day if this is just like a regular card. Hmm. Okay, blocking it. Nice, nice. So we're going to get our three card 12. Who knows what's in their arsenal right now? Probably the Wounded Bull, right? And then we're going to come in for six. Okay, uh, Winter's Bite. Yeah, that's going to... They almost trapped us there. That was, a, that was actually a pretty good play by them. Yeah, pretty good play. We're going to get wanded here, maybe? Oh, wow. Okay, they just held on to that. They're leaking a lot of damage, and we kept our Shadow Peed. Now we have a... Oof. Okay, the engine's going. The engine is going. Double blue blood rush. Wait, what did they play? Oh, did I click the wrong... Oh, of course we discard the blue. <laughs> of course. Whenever you play blood rush bellows and you have a blue six in your hand, it always gets discarded. That is the law of playing Reinar and Brute in general. That is the law. I think it's 100%. 150%. Oh, they're going to give us a bunch of frostbites here, probably. Wish we had that blue. Wish we had the blue. Okay, did they fuse it? Yeah. Create X under there, then. If I start to do that damage to the hero, we're going to take it. Three frostbites is a lot to get over. Oh my god, we got it. So this is going to cost this whole card. We can still do a perfect blood rush. We're going to take two blood debt, though. We're going to take two blood debt. Um, and we're going to lose our Art of War. Or we can just come in for eight. So they're down. Hmm. Interesting decision. Hold the Art of War. Art of War has to do more than five damage by itself to be better than not having an arsenal. So if we if we pitch right now, this, this Art of War is worth five here. I'm going to say five is a pretty big number. I think five is a pretty hard number to hit, right? So 14 and then eight. Yeah, look at that. They're not blocking. They're going to go all the way down to six. Yeah. <laughs> okay, they quit. <laughs> all right. All right, example one, maybe not the best example, but at least you got to see a little bit of what's going through my head there. Um, let's go look at what's what left in the rest of our deck. Uh, I think you have to switch to Legacy here. But let's just see what we're going to draw. Uh, yeah, okay, our Art Hours were there, which would have drawn us down to our final Blood Rush, which seemed to be pretty far away. So our final Blood Rush was far away, which meant that we got plenty of time to prep for our Blasphemous flip. Plenty of time. Um, and you know, we're like moderately healthy here. We would have found this endless law. This next turn would have been pretty okay. Like, you know, just setting up. Okay. Good game. Let's do another one. All right. Game two. We got ourselves, uh, Azalea. Scowling flashback is super good into Azalea. So we're going to keep with like standard equipment here. We could get a little, uh, cheeky with grasp of the darkness to stop a rain razors on a Bolton shot. Huh? It's actually maybe the right call. Um, let me go take a look real quick. So we're going to add in our, our typical package here. I'm going to add in the command and conquers. Um, and then I might, if I'm going to go, typically if I'm going to go not gambler's gloves, I take out the three savage feasts, right? Um, so I'm going to take out these savage feasts and then I might go pulping or I might go guardians. Hmm. I think I haven't really experimented that much with this list. Uh, with Guardians and the Azalea. I haven't played that many Azaleas, to be honest. Why, why can't I? Why can't I deselect this one? There we go. Oh, I forgot to do it, and I just ruined everything. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't mind if either of these go in my arsenal, to be honest. So we're gonna we're actually gonna try and banish this endless mob. This, this, yeah. Okay, let's do it. We're gonna fill our graveyard. We kept the endless mob. Okay, not terrible. And I'm pretty upset. I messed up there so now i took out the most powerful card that goes gambler's gloves and uh i have nothing to show for it absolutely awesome i kind of want to block with these two get them in my graveyard early to be fair and then put this in my blood in my arsenal for blood that's what's going through my head block with these two play this keep this at all costs Ugh, premeditate Blech. do they want do they want to reload what do you think giving up a lot of equipment early 
giving up a lot of equipment early. This could be like, hmm, putting this in a graveyard early. I can block nine here. The pond, does the ponder really matter? But that's a good question, right? They're gonna get a ponder token. If they reload this and fire this, oh man, what a what a sad day for me. Um, and they opted. What did they do when they opted? Okay, so they're going random. Um, huh. I don't know what to do. Kind of still want to keep with the game plan. But if they if they reload and hurt me for this, I'm gonna be so mad. Are they reloading? How mad am I? How upset am I? Not upset. Okay. So we're at four. Uh we're gonna two card nine them. Okay, turning on a lot of blood that early. Not my favorite. They're gonna eat it. Oof. Okay, scowling flesh bag is probably gonna come into play here. Yes, it is. Mm, a yellow blood rush. <sighs> but we have a one cost in our arsenal to save us. Drill shot. Huh. Okay. Premeditate. Do we just go for the damage here? I feel like I can get more value here. Uh, is this a rain razors? It doesn't. Yeah, I kind of figured it was a rain razors. Oh my god. I wanted to go for the scowling flesh, but I had a feeling. And but I was like, ah, there's a one in three chance I'll hit the rain razors. One in three chance. See, scowling flesh bag. I thought about it for the blood rush. Preserving blood rush here was so important that maybe that was the right call. Because they still would have rain razored and snapped and still hit us. But the turn wouldn't have been as good. So yeah, that's not great for us. And they double. Yeah, they get the double. What is this? How punishing are we? Drill shot? All right, whatever. Not this is not going well. Because they also hit us with the frailty there. They hit us with the frailty, which ruins our blood rush math, which ruins the trade we just made. Not great. Very aggressive. So we're coming in for four. Okay, four. We're hoping this hits, and then we can come in at least to preserve the math that we just made. Let's hope. Oh, we hit the blue. Are they going to give us two cards? Oh, they didn't. Sure, now we get the turn off blood. They should have given us two cards there. Okay. Okay. We recovered slightly with our blood rush there. Red. Oh, we're going to do our three card 12. Do they have a buff? Ooh, they do. Do they have eight? Non-dominate. We don't really have a good answer. <laughs> hmm. This is one of those weird Leviathan things where it's like, we can block seven, still get hit. Or we can just block six, take two. I mean, we're not, we don't care that much. But we can't turn off blood debt. We'll take five. That's unreasonable amount of damage to take. So what do we want? What would we rather have in our arsenal? I don't really love having a swing big in my arsenal this late. Because then we're really relying on scabs. Oh, take a five. My favorite. Not my favorite at all. Okay, just turning off blood dead. We're going to go back up to three. We're going to have to get lucky with our next hand. We have to get pretty lucky. They're going to 11. We might be able to blast my fed flip here. What do we have? Endless Maw and Dread Screamer. Wow, we can blast my fed flip. Uh, not having a yellow here. Blows. This will take us to five. And then we can double block. Swing eight. Which five would we rather take? They still have one left. They're one floating. If this is a buff card, we have seven blood debt. We can Blasmo Fet flip. We can Blasmo flip. Or we can scabs. But then we can't flip. I think flipping is important here. I think I'd rather take this five, to be honest. If this is a buff card, we made a mistake. Ah, sure, we don't. Uh, Shadow Realm is coming in to kill us. Oh, Codex? Hmm. Oh, red. Wow, this card ruined our whole day. This is why playing d Rex into more aggressive matchups is actually a bad idea. So I sideboarded completely wrong with this game. And we lost value. <sighs> I should have scowling flesh bagged. I, I made like three mistakes on this turn. Um, at least we can blast with that flip, but then they're going to redden the ledger. They're definitely going to redden the ledger us. I kind of want to get this out of my hand, though. I guess we're just going to take all of this damage. Yeah, what a fucking... What a waste. Yeah, okay. We If we would played that differently, we would have... We actually probably would have won just right like this turn. Ooh, and we lost our blood rushes. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Skullbone. <sighs> Non-blocks in our hand almost entirely. Seek and destroy. Yeah. What are you going to load? Bolton shot. Uh, they're really hoping that this hits, right? Uh, uh, we want to get... Hmm. We want to get... Hmm. Okay. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're trying to stuff it perfectly. Um, not what I love to see here, especially on a two-card play like this. But at least we can pressure. At least we can pressure him. That was like a whirlwind of mistakes and issues that I made there. So let's uh, not ever do that again. Both our blood rushes are gone. Hmm. Can they kill us with two cards, though? If, as long as this isn't like a red. Of course it is. It's a red. Um, hmm. Seek and destroy two. Okay. Uh, if only we had a blue. Hmm. I think I'm going to Art of War. 
four, eight. Wait, start of this turn. So I do it again. Sorry, buddy. I missed my window. Oh, did I mess you up? Okay, so you can destroy. Yep. Okay, now I'm gonna Art of War, bop. I'm gonna buff my action cards and banish and draw two. I'm gonna get rid of the Shadow Peed so I have blocking cards. That is a literal worst case scenario again. Literal worst case scenario. Wow, do I have a one cost in my arsenal? I do. Thank goodness. Jeez Louise. I need a blue, man. Give me a blue. Give me a, the ability to do anything here. One cost six. We're surviving, but only because we're getting lucky. <laughs> I'm I'm making so many mistakes this game, you guys. It's ridiculous. I need like a... There's, I'm on like six or seven in this game. Sorry. Mm. Trying to get ready to go pick my, my buddy from the airport. Wasn't in the mental space for this game, but we're going to do it anyways. Taking four. Now they're trying to lock us out. Doomsday. Wow, we can just zero cost six here. Wow. Dude, the amount of Art of Wars we've drawn in a row. Kind of ridiculous. Sleep Dart. Eight. Nine, ten. Um, lose all hero abilities. So we'll take Blood Debt and die. <laughs> uh, we can... Yeah, we'll take Blood Debt and die, right? So if I take two here, then I take eight. Okay. Uh, but then I can't play for my Banish Zone. Oh, looks like we're doing it again. Uh, fuck, man. I keep missing the button. Let me send a message. Sorry. Sorry, buddy. I keep missing the window. At least we'll have Doomsday. That's the minimum. Bop, bop, banish, buff, draw two, dump, banish, draw two blocks. We're still going to get hit. Goodness gracious. Everything's going wrong. I can't see. See, Art of Wars always kill me. They always kill me. Uh, so this is going to get turned off and I'm going to take. So I'm taking six here. Gross. I'm taking six. I'm taking six. And we're going to lose six cards, so we have to kill them next turn. But we have Blasphemous If they don't kill Blasphemous here, I mean, then we just, like, kind of poke them multiple uh, forever permanently until they kill it. And then I just kind of, I'm going to have to perfect stack blues. I have to perfect stack blues, hold on to them, pitch them, and then I'll have a loop of Blasphemous Uh And then may maybe one of these freaking days. Also, because since I can't see my side banish pile, I don't know where my, ooh, I don't know where my Reckless Wings are either. No one was played, and I probably banished the other at this point. Uh, if I can hold these two cards, or these two cards, uh, we have a 12, which they'll block with their whole hand on to blue. Hold the blue. Damn, that's a lot of cards. 12. I'm going to need to pay for that blood rot and hold on to this blue. Okay, so now we got Dread Screamer holding a Dread Screamer into six. Um, I think we go for it. Oh, do we lose the game? Okay, good. Six. Good game. We barely squeaked it out. Yeah, good game. So that's how you don't play Levia into this matchup. <laughs> that's that's how you don't do it. I made ridiculous amounts of mistakes in that game, guys. Um, like so many that I might as well review it and tell you everything I did wrong. But okay, we won. Took it away. Levia does damage. She do strong things. I should have won like honestly five turns ago, but that's okay. All right, next game. All right, game number three here. We're going to take CNC just because we want to hit that cmh i guess and we got nothing nothing uh hmm probably want the boneyard i guess um keep the yellow keep the yellow briar's a briar's a oh god briar's a bad matchup no matter what <laughs> i think it's really a power play whoever finds their power card in this matchup is going to win immediately and that is all that is going to dictate the success or fail of this game here that's all it's going to do uh we're gonna arsenal that guy Ugh, this is what i'm talking about i hate i hate finding an art of war and a blood rush in the same hand i hate it and we have no graveyard absolutely hate it i can't even like art of war here Oh, we don't have enough graveyard to play a double like this. We just saw a Gravelin Growl too, so it's like we have what four left in the deck, three centipedes. So four, five, six, seven. We have eight, nine, ten playable cards we could draw off the top. Eleven, twelve playable cards we could draw off the top. We're gonna take that. Uh, oh, and we can't even block it. <sighs> wow, what a disaster! What a disaster! Looks like we're going to be sending that Art of War to the bottom. Um, well, yeah, we don't even, we still can't really, we'll have perfect amount of Blood Rush discard. Going to be starting our discard journey here. Uh, nice and uh, nice and slow. Oh my God, I hate 
Art of War Blood Rush hands. And now all of our Art of Wars are going to go straight to the bottom. Man, it's so annoying when this happens. Uh, Bramble Spark, K, Fuse, Autumn's Touch. At least our opponent's going like hella slow. I would love to shut this off so they don't get to block efficiently on our first Blood Rush turn. Um, but I don't think it's warranted. So we're just going to go for it. Take eight to do hopefully more than eight. This is kind of like a slow briar though. Hmm? So two Art of Wars right next to each other. Now we draw all the blues. Six, 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 six. Uh, we want to keep this in our hand. So Art of War next to Convulsions, next to an Art of War. This pitch stack is a F tier, F tier pitch stack. But that's not really what we're hoping to do in this matchup, I don't think. We're not really hoping to pitch stack our way into a nice closure. Even though they're going kind of slow, I think they just drew bad. Because they have all the telltale, telltale signs of being like an aggro briar. This isn't some weird brief, beefy briar Rosetta build, I don't think. Um, we'll keep the Growling Growl. I don't love it, but we do have a Dread Screamer, right? That was kind of important, getting that Dread Screamer in there. But now we only have two cards in our Banish Zone. Um, so it's not the best. Luckily, Briar is going to attack us next turn, right? Um, oh, okay. Okay. I mean, this Arsenal sucks, but um, we could really mess up the turn with a Scowling here. But I kind of want to save it for a Channel Mount Heroic turn. But this could, like, really mess this math up because they probably have, like, a blue... A buff and something else, you know. Oh, CNC. I guess that's what Husk is for, huh? So this are this card's dead. Oh, we got it. Okay. The reason I rolled there first is because I have two Savage Feasts, and that means that I'm gonna play one because this card's unplayable pretty much. So we're gonna pitch here. Um, we're gonna come in for. We can actually get off this gravel and growl, so we can come in for six. Uh, here we could, we could claw into this into that but um well maybe we save hmm yeah i think we just go for more damage turn off blood dead we're at five hopefully we can banish one more and then find doomsday we haven't seen it yet doomsday would be pretty sweet against briar i do like finding doomsday we still have bag in case this is like a five card channel mount heroic bag will save us on our following turn we don't have carrion husk um but we can we can claw into Graveling Growl, so that would be, you know, eight, five, nine. Not not bad. And we keep this Savage Feast. Um, Savage Feast, we still have Gambler's Gloves. Like, it's a little risky. We don't have Blood Debt. I mean, we have too much. We have a lot of Blood Debt to put this in our arsenal already. Um, but we can do it, you know? We can do it. So eight, five, nine, I think is our right choice here. I don't like pocketing this, I think. I think it's risky we don't get to control we discard so that means that like we're kind of stuck if this discards our only blood that card blah 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 we could claw keep this that's trading for value mm, i think we go for it pressure this hand that they haven't been super willing to block with like they're giving us our armor and stuff um so in order to play this card we have to keep two blood dead cards in our hand which does trade off a lot of its value intrinsically like Reinhardt, it's like you want to kind of have it with three cards and one in arsenal i don't really ever love arsenaling this card oh we got doomsday but it's our blue huh of course it's our blue that sounds like what a that's the that's the price we pay here and we only have one blood deck card so this is kind of like awkward again like i was saying and we have one non-block here uh, i don't this won't turn out blood dead we're going to take five if we don't just play this two card. And we're going to get stuck with this non-block, a Savage Feast in our arsenal, and we lose Doomsday. That sucks. Sucks pretty bad. Looks like no matter what, we lose Doomsday. Okay. I kind of hope they see and see us. <laughs> they can't, but I kind of hope they would. Uh, I think I'm going to overpitch this Slithering Shadow P. Two Art of Wars are gone, so it's like, what's the point of having it? But we only have four cards in our Banish Zone. Risk taking five, go to 19. That seems like a good way to throw the game away. Because then we'd have to draw a blood deck card. Yeah, it sucks. Sucks. Sucks to suck. Uh, we kind of knew putting this in our soul was dangerous. Now we only have two cards in our graveyard, which means we're going to have to like really either block one and then hope, or we're going to have to go for like a necessary savage feast into something. But that requires scabs to hit, which is 50% chance to just die. Okay. Taking two. Lost our doomsday. Ooh. One more blood dead card again. Do we transform here? We have like one okay card. Do we transform? Is that what we're gonna do? Do we transform? Five. That was a blue. That sucks. Okay. Mm, 
Okay. Let's see. We might go for the transformation here. Yeah. We might go for it. I don't have blood rush yet. I would have liked, I probably better idea to block. Oh God. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We got the blue and we have our blood dead card. Hmm. 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 So we're going to do a lot of damage here. This is why this card's good. It's kind of awkward in Leviah, but I mean, like it is a five card hand, but we could have blocked. Honestly, I should probably should have blocked. I just really wanted to lower the chances of discarding the Boneyard Marauder in case we drew something that made me want to fire a blood dead card like an endless maw or whatever. I don't know. Um, so yeah, C six, three, three, six, right? So 18 damage turn. And we're going to keep an arsenal if we wanted to, uh, again, it's kind of rough city here. Like I can force the transformation into Blasphemy. We have one decent target and then like some chaff, uh, but we do, haven't seen very many dread screamers. So like this card's also playable. So the question now is, do I flip or not? The question is, do I flip or do I hold? Um, I mean, they're at 11. They're blocking a lot. So we'd have to take five points of damage in order to have our flip threatened. Uh, but I don't like, again, I don't want to arsenal this one. I really don't. I might just do it. Let's just, let's just flip. Let's flip. We're going to take a lot of self-inflicted damage here. But we have our armor and I have a Dread Screamer. So we're pretty much set. And this fills the graveyard more. And this will be fired off the Dread Screamer. Okay, so, ooh, god turn, we win. GG. I think this is it. Uh, this is like the dream come true of a, of a Levi flip. Dream come true. Uh, what is this card? Our opponent's been going way too slow. I don't know if this is a typical, I don't even really have to. I don't, I don't think I have to block. Go ahead, do whatever you got. There's no reason to. I'll keep this for a turn that might be scarier. Um, so we have the six card Blood Rush, right? So Blood Rush, it could be seven card Blood Rush if we hit the Beast Within. Um, we kept the Dread Screamer. What'd we draw though? So we can Dread, Dread, Gravel and Growl. If we drew a blue, this would have been sick. So eight, 16. Mm, it's a little low. I wish I could claw here. We could save. Let's just see what they do. Let's play the one in our hand first. Let's not give away more information than we need to. So eight, they have six life, right? But they have, yeah, embodiment's going to hurt a little bit. Oh, okay. Blocked eight. I mean, I think we just threatened their whole hand. Now. This is, they're dead. There's not much they can do, I don't think. Because even if these two block four, then they're dead. They don't have any equipment left, right? And that doesn't block four. So, yeah, they're dead here. And then, yeah, eight. Good game. Good game. And that was with, like, a pretty decent amount of self-inflicted damage there. But, like, once you have that much tempo, you don't mind, like... The game looks closer than it actually was, but like we were pretty much unstoppable, even with like bad draws in the beginning of the game. However, this Briar didn't really threaten us very much, you know? Um, but yeah, those are that's three games, three games in a row, three wins in a row, right? Um, you know, this deck this deck can definitely crush your locals, definitely crush Talishar, you know, major events. You're gonna have to really not make mistakes like I did in that last game. Um, and you know, like I think. As far as tournaments go, 13 plus games sometimes over the course of two days. She's got some consistency issues, Levaya, right? Um, but it's not that bad, right? Like you can mostly recover. Um, certain matchups don't give you that much breathing room though, right? Like Katsu, Lexi. They're really going to be like hitting you from turn one as hard as they possibly can. So you don't really have the luxury of choosing your flip kind of like we did in these last couple games, like where... It felt like we were pretty in control. We were choosing when to flip. We were, you know, we made some big sacrifices to even to do it. Like we lost six in this game. We had a pretty decent blood dead pile. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the power of Vaya, right? Like we're just kind of, these are bad matchups typically for Vinar that we're just kind of walking into, you know, just doing pretty good. Um, yeah. All right. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you around. See you at Nationals. Bye.